Cultural Research Council is of great importance uh, because the work that we've done here in this institute especially is to secure um, safe um, food for people to eat. I am Aurine Strijdom. I am an entomologist at the ARC Grain Crops. Okay, so entomology is the study of insects, so that is basically what we do here. And we, I would say, more or less focus on um, resistance development in insects more at our institute. So we are working with a lot of agrochemical companies, um, seed companies, chemicals, seed treatments that we test, and even genetically modified crops. So we will go out and see if certain chemicals are still effective because resistance is such a big problem in South Africa as Bujaola Fusca that, are, that they are inoculating here behind me has already had resistance um, to the single commercialized BT event in South Africa. So what we want to do is to continuously monitor different species, target and non-target, for resistance. Because at the end of the day, we want the technology to last. So the different species are reared on two different artificial diets. We put them in artificial rearing environments where we control the temperature, the humidity and the light and night day and period. We usually want the insects to think it is springtime. I am Oli Lemakoso, a new technician. So basically what I'm doing here, I am transferring larvae new uh, in, in enclosed larvae to the artificial diet and uh, they're going to stay here up until they become pupae. Then they're going to harvest pupae and plus them into the breeding cages. Then from breeding cages, the cycle starts, it goes and on. So basically keeping them in the artificial diet since it's winter time and we don't have enough plants to feed them. So this diet is actually their, um, uh, uh, it, they, they think it's the plants that they live in and then they can complete their life cycles. I started working with at ARC in 2015 as a, a technician, junior technician, working on insects. Actually, I was not exposed to, to insects that much, but when I got here at ARC, they gave me enough, uh, they gave me opportunity to work on insects. I did a diploma in agricultural production at Mango City University of Technology. Then I had to do my in-service training and ARC gave me that opportunity. And after they also gave me an opportunity to further my studies. So I went at TUT to an University of Technology to do my BTEC. And with the, um, because I was so eager to learn more and the background of entomology I didn't have, I was also granted an opportunity to go at uh, um, Northwest University to do my occasional studies to learn more on insects and their behavior. Plant pathologist in layman's terms is a plant doctor. It is my job to understand the pathogens that make the plant sick and to think about management options that a farmer can use in a field to lessen these diseases. Because some of the diseases can cause up to 100% yield loss. A mycotoxin is um, a specific fungi that can produce a poison, so it can cause health problems. And it is therefore very important for us to understand the fungi that produce these mycotoxins. Because a um, mycotoxin is a secondary product of the fungi and if we can um, try and eliminate or lessen the fungi um, then we can lessen the mycotoxins that is produced. And in this freezer we can keep our fungi for up to 20 years. So let me show you how it looks inside. My name is Lerato Mamabulo and I'm currently doing my PhD in plant production and then I'm here to, to do my internship so they're training me basically in microbiology so I will encourage young people to do um, to go for science and agriculture because honestly there are a lot of opportunities and you get to experience quite a lot of things. We are facing a lot of challenges when it comes to food. So even if you don't have a job, so if you gain experience maybe in the field, so you can create your own things and then you'll be able to create a lot of job opportunities.
So here we are doing a trial on a weed called Coniza, commonly known as fleabane. It has been found that farmers have been trying to deal with it on their farms, but over the years it has found resistance. So now we are trying different post-emergence at sealing stage and at bolting stage to see what can effectively control it. So right now, what is important with this trial, you need to have three seedlings per pot and that would affect the results at the end of the day. And we are using vermiculite and sand mixture. So the minimum temperatures should be 19, maximum temperatures should be 26, nothing over than that. Three is to uh, make things easy for the researcher when she does analysis. So when, for example, you plant a lot because they are very small seeds. So initially when you plant them, they're gonna come up and you're gonna have more than 50, and then you have to prune to three, and then three for each plot. That way it makes your, your data at the end of the day to be constant and have a direction to say, are we effectively controlling this week or not? But now if you have different numbers with different uh, pots with the same populations, then it's become a problem. Because what, what's interesting as well, these are different populations from different parts of South Africa that we've taken, where farmers have complained to say they found a resistance there. Environmentalists, they'll say weeds are good, hence they protect the environment. But with farmers, they interfere with the main crop. So in simple terms, a weed is something that grows out of place. So actually, a maize plant will be a weed in a sorghum field. So same thing as weeds, they are growing where we don't want them. And if you do not control them effectively, they can be detrimental. Uh, giving you lots and lot, uh, lo lots and lots of, of loss of yields on your, on your fields. Let it be maize, sorghum, or any grain crop for that matter. Hence why we control them. And also some weeds attract other pests and insects and we do not want that to, to uh, our, our, plant, our plants or our crops to be affected by pests and insects. Wanted to do agriculture because it has diversity and I've always wanted to have impact in the world. So science is where I can make an impact. Science is not for the bright. Science, is, uh, and, science and agriculture is for the passionate. It's for people who are passionate and people who, who have the drive for the, for, for, for the job. So uh, what I did at school, I did a diploma in agricultural uh, sciences based mainly on crop production. And currently I'm doing an advanced diploma in agricultural management. Um, I find science um, very um, invigorating. I find it very challenging. It is a career if you do not only want to sit in an office the whole day. With science, uh, you get to see the world, you travel a lot for work, um, you go to the fields, you are in the laboratory and you are in the office. So uh, for personal growth, it's an excellent career to choose. I discovered a passion accidentally for insects when um, I was considering doing my honours after I graduated and I heard about crop protection and plant protection. So I just want to say to future students, technicians, researchers, research assistants that um, science is not boring, entomology is not boring and agriculture is not boring. This is a necessity. We are looking at food security. It is very important and you will see that it is very exciting as well.